Hello and welcome. I'm, I'm very glad that I'm at the opportunity to talk to you and, and give you a little bit of an impression about what we are doing here. No. Oops. Well, what I want to talk to, talk to you about is making decisions. Making decisions is quite hard, and I'm sure you make lots of decisions in your daily life. There might be decisions about money. How should I invest my money? There might be decisions about how should we bid for this contract if, if you just take on the um, perspective of a company you might work in. But it might be also personal decisions. What should I eat for lunch? Should I buy a car? Um, should we invest in a vaccine? Or what should I study? I guess all of you had to ask um, yourself that before you decide to study here with us. So lots of decisions, lots of questions. And that's what decision analysis is about. Supporting decision making under conditions of uncertainty. That means quite often we don't quite know what the outcome is. If we invest in something, we're not quite sure what money we get back. Um, if, if we eat some lunch, or all some lunch, we don't, don't quite know whether we like it or not. And even if you decide to come to university like ours, there's still some uncertainty around it. So we regularly make decisions under uncertainty. And the approach I want to talk to you about today, this is my analysis, makes a, makes a few assumptions about how those decisions um, can be made and how the environment is within which we make those decisions. The first um, condition would be there's a clear choice of alternatives. Maybe if the decision is stay in your homeland or move to a different country. Quite clearly, there are two alternatives. In investment decisions, I could say, I invest in shares of one company or the other company or third company. Very clear alternatives. I know what I'm choosing in between. Now, requirement. Um, we know something about probabilities. So, so even though it's uncertain, we can, can quantify that uncertainty. Um, let, let's assume for, for that first example, uh, where we said it's about migrating or staying in your home country. If you stay, there would not be, not be any change. You have a job. If you migrate, you might find a better job or you might become unemployed. So we make it quite simple. So just a, a few possibilities. But for each of those, we assume there's quite clearly a probability which can be ascribed to that uncertainty. So here saying this probability of 80%, you will find a better job and 20% you will be unemployed. Or for the other example is investment. Again, we would assume if that problem is suitable for our approach here, we would need to have hit the um, probabilities for all the three um, possibilities and for the different outcomes, make a profit or loss. So, and then the outcomes. They also need to be clear. For example, for the, um, for the example of moving, moving the country, um, maybe there's no change. If you stay at home, this is the same salary. If you get a better job, a specific salary, or if you get a no job, well, you are nothing. Or maybe for the example of investing, you can also assume um, that there are some quite clear outcomes. You make profit or loss of a specific magnitude. So, as you can see, that those are simplifications. But assume we have a situation where that applies. What can we do? Um, well, let's, let's look at an example um, a company might be faced with. Um, let's, that company, medical software company, has two options. Two options to um, fulfill some contract. They can use what I've all, the techniques they've always used, the conventional techniques. And they're, they're pretty sure, I've experienced in that, they will make a profit. They make a profit of 20,000 pounds. That's pretty good. And the other option is they could use an untested design technique. If it was successful, they would make twice the profit. That's 
for 400,000 pounds. But if it wasn't successful, if they would spend much more time on it, if they had to fix lots of problems while doing it, the outcome would only be 50,000. Now, it, since that's a decision analysis problem we want to look at, we, we need probabilities. In that case, we do have them. We, we have the probability that a new technique is successful of 60%. So what can we do now? We, we can we can look at it graphically. Conventional technique in the decision tree, clearly, outcome is 200,000 pounds of profit. The new technique, well, it depends. If you're successful, 60%, 100,000 um, pounds profit, and successful, 50,000. Now the question is, what should we do? Well, one way to look at it is like this. We, we can look at a decision, <coughs> sorry, we can look at a decision tree and go back. So we, can, we look, what's the expected monetary value? What can we expect as profit to, to be found at the end? And we calculate it like, like that. We look at a probability of the success, 0.6 times the profit we can make, 400,000, plus the probability of the unsuccessful case, 0.4, times the profit we can make then. And so, so we see if we look at the expected monetary value, and I show you the formula for that as well. If you look at the expected monetary value, what we expect if we do the new technique is 260,000. Um, pounds. So that's higher than 200,000 pounds. And based on this calculation, we can say that's probably a good thing. And we could, can convince our boss, let's, let's, go, let's go with the new technique. Okay. That, that, that is rational and makes sense. Now, you, one of your colleagues might say, well, it's all too risky. We might end up with 50,000. And so maybe that colleague would be, would say, would be then so skeptical and try to convince everybody um, that the conventional techniques would, would be more, more safer because there's no, no chance to just end up with 50,000. Or maybe another colleague would be really uh, like really taking risks and would say, well, there's a chance of making lots of money, so go, let's go with that. And a third colleague might say, actually, are we really, really sure about those probabilities? And are we really sure about the profit? And what, what, what could you do with that, with that um, argument? That's the next thing we're doing. Maybe we couldn't do a sensitivity analysis. It says, how would our decision depend on um, uncertainty in the probability of success? or uncertainty in the profit. And, and for that, we can go back to our decision tree and say, okay, now we don't have um, a specific probability. We just know it's a probability P, that it's successful. And then obviously, the other side of the coin is, if it's unsuccessful, that's one minus that probability P. And again, we can calculate the expected monetary value. In this time, it's, it's not a specific number, but it, it, it's a formula. So the, prob the probability times 400, that's one minus the probability times 50. So again, the same idea, probability of success times uh, the outcome of the success plus the probability of failure times the outcome of failure. And so we get 350p plus 50, and so if that is, is bigger than 200,000, we would go with the new technique. Graphically, we can draw it. It would be like that, depending on P. Um, we, we get the expected monetary value, and I have drawn here the axis at 200, so that we see if it's above the, above the axis, we make a profit. If it's below the axis, um, uh, the conventional technique is is more um, profitable. 
And so of the graph you see, it's, it's somewhere a little bit over 0.4. And if you calculate it uh, properly, oh, sorry, I'm, I was too fast. If you calculate it properly, we'd say, we see the difference between um, whether one technique should be used or the other uh, happens at 0.43. So we can do the exactly the same thing if we are uncertain about the profit we could make if the technique is successful. So if there's uncertainty in different parts of the problem. In this case, we know the probabilities, but we don't know um, the profit we can make with the new technique if it's successful. And in that case, let's do again the same calculations. The probability of success times the outcome. The outcome is not just my, um, that's probably a failure times that outcome. And if you do the calculation, we compare the result to the conventional technique with a profit, potential profit of 12,000. And then we see it makes sense um, to invest in a new technique if um, the successful, if in a successful case, the outcome is at least 300,000. So now we, we know actually quite a lot, lot more. It doesn't really matter so much that we know the exact numbers. As long as we know um, that the profit is at least 300,000, it's a good idea to go with the new technique. If it's 500,000, it's even better, but at least 300,000 in a successful case, that tells us something. So that's really useful. And so that will help us to make a good decision. So what have we learned? We have to have, have learned how we can structure a relatively straightforward decision problem using decision trees. We have learned how we cal can calculate the expected value of a decision tree using this rollback roll technique. And we have learned about it ways to conduct sensitivity analysis on decision tree. So that, that's quite good. But maybe you, you, you tell yourself, actually, it's much more complicated. Like, real life is more complicated, you might say. And that is true. So maybe you are like that colleague I mentioned before who likes taking risks. And may, maybe so that just a chance to get 400,000 might be might be really really attractive to you and so there are ways to take that into account different people have different different risk profiles or maybe four hundred thousand would make a real difference uh, a real difference to the company while getting fifty thousand would be so catastrophic because stuff would need to be made redundant or things like that so there, there might be more things to take into account and or maybe if it's an investment problem like we talked before, where you might lose money, maybe that's so horrible for you, that really can't happen. So, so maybe we need to take different things into account. Or maybe what we've done here is all about money. Maybe you just, it's more than money you care about. Um, that, that might be important in the, in the question we had in the beginning about moving, moving from your home country. Maybe it's not just about money. So then we need to think, how can we make rational decisions where we take other things into account? Maybe the enjoyment you get out of it, maybe whether you're close or far from your family or things like that. So we need to think about ways to take that into account. Or what is if things change over time? If, if, if the situation is, is changing, what do we do then? So there's lots more stuff to think about. And that's probably one of the reasons um, that course might help you a lot, because there's plenty of interesting things to, do, to, to think about, to study around, how to make decisions. And business analytics is somehow about making decisions, making good decisions, robust decisions, decisions you can trust. And you will, in that course, uh, you will learn lots of different techniques. You will learn about simulation, optimization, uh, data analytics, working with big data, uh, you will learn techniques like programming and it's business analytics and finance. So you, you will also learn a lot about finance, about co corporate finance, behavioral finance, derivatives, credit risks. Lots of things um, are covered in our, in our program. Kind of interestingly, it brings together both the business analytics side and the finance side. And so 
it gives you the kind of opportunity to broaden your horizon in, in quite, a, quite a good way. Um, one thing is this is not a cluster MC program which stands on its own. It's an MSC program which is part of the programs offered by COMSYS. COMSYS is the Center for Operation Research Management Science and Information Systems. It's one of the largest operational research groups in the world, and it combines people from the business school and people from the mathematics. And so um, you will not only meet people from other MSc programs in the business school, but also uh, will meet people from mathematics who kind of take similar MSc programs there, also operational research, operational research finance, which is kind of relatively similar um, similar programs. Um, one great thing about COMS is if we have industrial liaison officers, which help our students and us uh, to be really close to industry, uh, build contacts there. We have practitioner talks that people from industry come in, talk, talk about um, how they use personality techniques um, in, in their jobs, in, in their companies, in their organizations. We have career talks. We have a great alumni network with lots of people who have come um, through our programs over the years, come back, give talks. Um, being in Columbus, uh, we, we, we would suggest you could also become a member of the OR Society. And, and what, one of the really special thing about Columbus is um, we have good relations with companies and companies offer us uh, projects for the summer. And the one part of the MSc is over the, over the summer, you will, you will work in detail, in depth on one project, uh, your dissertation project. And some people use some academic uh, problems uh, and some people work with an organization. And so all college students um, have the chance, if they perform well in, the, in their modules, to compete for summer projects. With external organizations, um, we have some projects with lots of different companies, different companies in the UK, um, like Airbus, Babcock. Uh, we have companies, uh, we work with BMW, we work with companies in China. This year, we even have um, pro uh, projects in India. In, 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 all, in normal times, um, of course, People, students quite often um, work with Indo are embedded in those companies and work with them, while some students stay at university. This year, of course, everything is, is online, but uh, we, we've kind of managed to, 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 to set that up. And so now our students, right now, uh, they started a few, few weeks ago, are, are working with, with companies all, um, in the UK, in China, um, in India, in, 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 in that new online world uh, we're we all living at the moment. And let's see how it will be next year. Hopefully we will, again, can be, uh, send students um, directly to be within organizations, but even if not, um, this year shows we are flexible and we can make it happen. Um, and if you're doing well in such a project or in your dissertation, even if it's not within the company, you might win a prize. And Basically, every, every year, um, one of our country students uh, has, award, um, has been awarded the May Higgs Award, which is um, a NOAA Society Award. There are other prizes to be won for, for best projects in, in different, different areas. And so that's, that's kind of what I wanted to tell you about a little bit about our program and also give you a, give you a taste of kind of the, the types of topics we're talking about um, in that program. Okay, thank you.